Hi guys, welcome to Simple Programming. In this video lecture, we are going to take a look at what is JSON Web Token. JSON Web Token is a JSON object that is defined in RFC 7519 as a safe way to represent a set of information between two parties. The token is composed of header, payload and a signature. Before we move on and take a look at JSON Web Token, let's understand the history so far. In order to secure a web service, we have been using SAML authentication for a very long time and it is the most popular authentication even today. A lot of applications are using SAML authentication. SAML is an XML based authentication and it gives you a lot of options for encryption as well as to define your signatures. But the only disadvantage is it needs an advanced XML parsing engine to work with. Then came the simple web token, which is SWT. SWT was very simple. It just operates with a key value pair concept. And the disadvantage of simple web token was it only supported symmetric signatures. The most used implementation nowadays is JSON web token. So what these guys did is like they took the simple uh, web token and then restructured it and modified it to a more mature and a better authentication mechanism that is JSON web token. So JSON web token is JSON encoded. It supports symmetric and asymmetric signatures. It supports symmetric and asymmetric encryptions. Now it serves as a base for almost everything that you use in to secure a web service. That is, it serves as a base for OAuth2, it serves as a base for OpenID. It is now a baseline for all your authentication nowadays. The structure of the JSON web token is as follows. It has a header information, it has a metadata information, it informs about the algorithm of the signature used, and then the claim object. So what is a claim? So it is actually a payload component of the JWT. It contains a lot of information about the issuer, who is going to be the audience, at what time the token was issued, when it's going to expire, subject, and then you can even have your customized elements put into the claim object. So the JSON Web Token gives you a token which is a combination of header, claims, and signature. In order to create a token, the steps to follow are pretty much straightforward and simple. First, you have to create a header. The header component of the JWT contains information about how the JWT signature should be computed. And then you create a payload. The payload component of the JWT is the data that is stored inside the JWT, which is nothing but your claim object. The signature is computed as follows. So you'll have to take the header and use base64 URL encode on top of it. And then you have to take the payload, use base64 URL encode on top of it append both of both of them and then you have to hash this data and this hash data is again base64 URL encoded to provide you your signature so once you put all these three components together right you will get your token like above the dot represents the first dot represents header the second dot represents the value of your claim the third dot represents the encoded value of your signature you need to understand one thing when you use JSON Web Token. The token is encoded and signed, but it is not encrypted. Since the JWT are signed and encoded only, and since JWT are not encrypted, JWT does not guarantee any security for sensitive data. And this is something that you have to consider when you write code for your production application and on how to encrypt your data. So you are just going to sign it with an algorithm and you're going to encode that algorithm and provide a token, but you're not encrypting the actual data. So that's something that you'll have to take a look at when you write code for your production application. Okay, let's take a look at a flow of how the JWS token system works. So from a browser, you try to do a post request to a new URI, and you're going to send a username, password, or some client text or client ID or password text to the server. The server is going to verify the username password text that you have sent and then if the authentication 
uh, you know, against the database passes right, then you'll be sent back a token uh, uh, and a successful response to the browser. So as an end user, you will take the token, you will create a header with authorization uh, as a name, and you'll have a, a bearer name in it. You can have a, any bearer name there. It doesn't have to be always bearer. You can even have your app name, or you can have even have an encrypted text there, which can act as a first level and authentication for your application before the token itself. So you can do all these things there. And then you're going to hit the actual resource. So when you do this, it's going to validate the token. It's going to check the expiration, expiration date, and it's going to validate different things uh, that are present in the token. Um, then if everything uh, succeeds, then it's going to allow the user to, the request to access the resource and send back a successful response. A pretty straightforward you know, um, way of uh, accessing an application with the help of token. In my next video, I'll be showing you how to create a simple implementation of JWT with Spring Boot. And then I'll also show you the right way of doing JWT with Spring Boot application, especially for production applications. Thanks for watching guys and please subscribe for more such videos.